I've tested every Sonos Arc home cinema setup so you guys don't have to, and here's what I've found. Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds, and I've got a lot in store for you in this video, sharing all of your options for upgrading your Sonos Arc setup and helping you maximize your budget. Now, one of the key benefits of Sonos being a wireless multi-room system is that you can grow your setup at your own speed, add extra products to improve your setup over time, and of course, swap products out to upgrade them in the future if you'd like to. But as there are so many different options, all at varying price points, it can be really hard to work out where your money is best spent, and of course, which solution is best for your particular space. Now, there are three soundbars to choose from currently, the Sonos Ray, the Sonos Beam Gen 2, and Sonos Arc. Essentially, giving us a good, better, and best option now, the Arc is Sonos's premium Dolby Atmos soundbar, which comes in at £899 and it sits at that best spot at the top of the lineup. Now, if you are interested in the Sonos Beam Gen 2, then we've already done this exact video, but for the Beam, and I've left it linked up here, so feel free to check that one out. But when it comes to the Sonos Arc, these are all of the options that I'm going to be testing today to share my thoughts with you guys. So, We've got a Sub Mini, we've got the Sub Gen 3, what would be a pair of Sonos 1SL rears, a pair of ERA 100s, a pair of ERA 300s, and a pair of Sonos 5s. And all of these have different benefits when added to the Sonos Arc. So I'll share which combination I think offers the sweet spot in the range and which would be my personal winner too at the end. Now, if you do want to dive deeper on any of these products, then we have got in-depth reviews across our channel. And as always, if you find this one helpful, then we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel and joined our community. Now, if you want to support us and make the most of our extended six-year Sonos warranty and you're based in the UK, then head to smarthomesounds.co.uk where our tech guides can give you any more personal advice that you need. Okay, kicking things off then, we need our starting point, which is of course the Sonos Arc. Now as the most powerful and premium soundbar Sonos offer, the Arc is a fantastic home cinema addition for your TV audio, and as a standalone product, creates a pretty impressive sound performance. Now inside, we've got 11 Class D digital amplifiers powering eight elliptical woofers for the mids, vocals and bass, and three tweeters for the higher frequencies and dialogue. Two of the woofers are sideways firing and two are dedicated height channels. And as this is a Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar, we get an expansive 3D performance from the Arc. Now for those interested, the Arc alone would offer a 5.0.2 setup with three channels from the front, two rears and two height channels. The rear and height channels being achieved by bouncing sound off your walls and off of your ceiling to create that 3D effect. If you add a subwoofer, you'll add a 0.1 in the middle to make it a 5.1.2. If you were to add a pair of Sonos rears, such as the Sonos 1SLs, ERA 100s or 5s, these would take two channels from the Arc to have dedicated rear channels, so it would still be a 5.1.2 setup, but with dedicated rear channels rather than the virtual effect that you get from the Arc alone. The exception to this is adding a pair of ERA 300 rears. As a single ERA 300 has dedicated upwards and sideways firing drivers, it will work alongside the Arc to offer a 7. 1.4 setup. Now there has been some confusion around this topic, so if you would like a more dedicated deep dive in how this all works, then let me know in the comments below. But we've tested this in our studio and it's been backed up by the VP of Product Program Leadership, Jeff Dederian, who explained how this setup works. Essentially, the Arc Sub and Era 300s will all work together to cover the different channels. So if a car passes around the room, it will feel far more immersive as it passes along the Arc via virtual sides and around the back. Now the same way if a plane flies overhead, it will pass from behind you all the way over the top and then pass over to the arc at the front. So while it's good to know what we're working with, I am getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So back to the arc alone. So to fit all of those drivers in here, this is a wider soundbar than something like the Beam and it comes in at 114 centimeters wide and therefore is better suited to TVs size 55 inches and above. Now, of course, don't forget to get Dolby Atmos support from the arc, you will need to connect to your TV via the eARC port and be watching Atmos content. Now, the Arc has well established itself as a great soundbar option and won what Hi-Fi's best soundbar in the £500 to £1,000 bracket in 2022. Now, for us, it delivers truly impressive vocals and a strong centre channel performance. The height channels definitely add extra immersion and for most spaces, the Arc gives a room-filling sound with decent bass for movies and music. The Arc is generally recommended for medium to large size rooms. Now, I know you guys like specific sizes, but there are a lot of factors that come into play, including if it's an open plan space, the seating arrangements and all those kind of things. So with Without speaking to you all individually, it's really hard to make a blanket statement. But if you have the budget, the Arc can really work in any space, but it probably would be a little bit overkill in a room that's smaller than something like three by three meters. 
Now we have two roads to go down for upgrading performance, add in a sub and or add in rear surround sound speakers. Now, if you've only got the budget to do one of those, then it can be a tough choice deciding which to add. Now, generally speaking, the ARC offers a decent amount of bass, so you might find more instant benefit in adding rear surrounds first. However, if you are the sort of person looking for rumble in your chest bass and you really watch a lot of action films or listen to lots of bass heavy music, then I'd say a sub is gonna give you what you're looking for. So let's start by looking at our options for adding a sub to the Sonos Arc. And we've got the Sub Mini or its bigger brother, the Sub Gen 3 to choose between. Now, one thing to note is that adding a subwoofer won't just add extra bass. The Sonos Sub takes away the load of the lower frequencies from the Arc, which in turn frees up more processing power for your soundbar to deal with the mids and dialogue. So you'll get an upgrade on all of the arrays. The Sub Mini is the more recent addition to the Sonos lineup coming in at 429 pounds and offers a more modern design with this curved shape. It's a more compact size too, so it can be placed in the corner of your room without being too imposing. Now for its size, the Sub Mini offers a great level of bass performance, and we've been really impressed by how much of an impact it can have with various Sonos products. However, it's not our natural recommendation with the Sonos Arc. Now that's not to say that we wouldn't recommend it, and actually for those in a more compact room or looking for a more affordable bass solution, then the Sub Mini might be all you need, and in that space, will offer a notable upgrade. However, the more natural fit for the Arc is gonna be the Sub Gen 3 as the premium sub in Sonos's lineup, but that does of course come with a higher price point of 799 pounds. It's worth highlighting that both subs state that they offer a frequency response as low as 25 hertz, but the Sub Gen 3 as the largest sub can offer a more impactful performance. Now, Sonos have said that both subs will deliver a similar performance at lower volumes, but when you start to crank it up, the Sub Gen 3 will give more powerful bass and be better for filling a larger space. One benefit the Sub Gen 3 is that it can be either stood up vertically or laid down flat, which means if you're short on space, you could opt to have it under your sofa, which is a nice little hack. Now, another perk of the Sub Gen 3 is that you can have two of them in one setup for a dual sub setup. Now, this is obviously gonna set you back 1,500 pounds or so, so it's not gonna be for everyone and it's a pretty powerful setup. So again, not gonna be right for every space, but for the right space with the Arc, this is a pretty impressive solution. So before I give you my verdict on how these work with the Arc, I'm gonna give you guys a listen back over in our studio. Now, I'll start with the Arc alone, then add a Sub Mini, then swap that out for a Sub Gen 3, and then add a second Sub Gen 3. So sit back and enjoy. Here we go again, huh? For me, while I like the overall balance of the sound that the Arc offers, it really steps up with the addition of a subwoofer. Now, our space right here isn't particularly big, and actually, the Sub Mini has a decent impact on the Arc. I think you can tell that it's having an impact on all arrays, including the vocals and mid-range, and there is definitely a step up in bass. It rounds the Arc off nicely to have a really good package for movies, and for a lot of spaces, this would definitely be enough. But once you've heard the Sub Gen 3, it's a level of immersion and bass that you're regretful to give up. Now, like I said earlier, it feels like the Sub Gen 3 was made for the Arc. It brings action sequences to life, giving every effect more oomph, and it does give you bass that you can really feel in your chest, like you're at the cinema. Now, two subs again is just another level. It's probably overkill for my space, in all honesty, and like I said earlier, it's a lot unless you're in a larger room, but it adds an impressive upgrade to the Arc, which for movie lovers or for those looking for a powerful performance for music, will be satisfied with. Okay, 
What about adding surrounds then? Well, one option I won't be covering today is any of the Sonos products in partnership with IKEA in their Symphonisk range. But if you're looking for a more discreet solution which blends into your home, then you might want to take a look at those. Instead, I'm going to kick off with the Sonos One SL. Now, this is a variant of the Sonos One Gen 2 speaker, which was the entry level option in Sonos's wireless speaker lineup. It's since been replaced by the Era 100, which makes the SLs the most affordable solution, excluding the Symphonisk range, of course, coming in at $358. Pounds a pair. Now the One SLs are the speechless version of the One Gen 2, which means there are no mics for voice control, but as there is a mic in the arc, you wouldn't need that from the SLs anyway. Now a good thing about the SLs is their compact form factor, which makes them good for placing them on a unit, on stands behind your sofa, or wall mounting them. The next step up would be the Era 100s, which come in at £498 a pair. These are the next evolution from the Sonos One SL and boast a 25% larger woofer and an added tweeter in each speaker, so we can expect a step up in performance there. The Era 100s do also feature Bluetooth connectivity and a lining connection, but sadly both would be disabled if you use the speakers as rears. Now they are slightly taller speakers than the SLs, but still compact enough and versatile enough that they would work well in most spaces. The Sonos Era 300s are really in their own category of surround sound rears. These come in at a higher price point of £898 a pair. Now as Dolby Atmos speakers, the Era 300s have been designed to offer a totally different experience with speakers projecting sound from the sides, front and top with two sideways firing woofers, two sideways firing tweeters, one upwards firing tweeter and one front facing tweeter. Now that front facing tweeter is actually disabled when these are being used as rears as Sonos believe this will give the best effect from the speaker in this setup. It's possible Sonos could add the option to toggle that on and off down the line, but the Era 300s have been designed to deliver a very different surround sound experience. Our final option would be to add Sonos 5s as rears. These are the most premium Sonos speakers available right now, which come in at £1,098 a pair. Now they offer a very different experience to the Era 300s and a more traditional rear surround sound performance. However, they are bigger, more powerful speakers with a more impressive bass performance. And for me personally, it will come down to the type of experience that you're looking for with your setup. So let's give you guys a demo over in our studio to hear the differences between these options. Here we go again, huh? Here we go again, huh? So from that, I would say they all add their own spin on immersion for the Arc. The One SLs are a staple addition and you can't really go wrong for that price point. For more compact spaces, they might be all you need for the Arc and they definitely add another layer to your experience. But if you're coming in fresh, then I would say that the additional budget for the Era 100s might definitely be worth the stretch. It's not a huge difference, but when you listen over a longer period of time, you really do notice the areas where the Era 100s do have an impact. When watching any action sequence, any bass heavy elements that come from behind you do have more oomph with the 100s and overall they do fill a space better. So for any slightly bigger spaces, then you're getting more room filling performance. Now the Era 300s and the 5s are for those looking to really ramp up the performance and match the performance of the Arc well. If you've got a bigger space in the budget, then these are the two that you'll want to be looking at. 
Now, like I said earlier, both give a very different performance. The fives give more of a standard rear performance with more directional sound, but still offer impressive power and room filling performance. I would say that they're also a little bit bassier than the 300s, but when it comes to Atmos films, the combination of the era 300s and the arc is a no brainer. The two work together brilliantly to create almost a sphere of audio around you with effects coming from everywhere. Now, the first time I heard that combination, I was genuinely blown away by how much more immersed I was in the content that I was watching and this is really replicating cinematic performance on a personal level in your own home. Now of course both the fives and the 300s come with a step up in cost but if you're looking to maximize immersion from your arc then these will match the performance well. So, having tested all of these setups out, where do we think the sweet spot is? Now, for those of you looking to upgrade performance without forking out too much more money, then going for the Arc with the Sub Mini and Two Era 100s for £1,826 is a really good option. But my overall winner would be the Arc, Sub Gen 3, and Two Era 300s if the budget was there. Coming in, it's just over £2,500. Now, it really is one hell of a setup, and hopefully one day I'll have a big enough space to justify adding that second sub for the full 7.2.4 experience. But I wanna know what you guys think. Having heard all of these setups today, which way would you go? And if you've already got any of these combinations in your home, then let us know in the comments. I'm sure it will really help the community out. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know if you did and would like more of this. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.